afternoon. It's Wednesday, February 11th. I'm Lauren Cornfield, and this is IBA News, broadcasting from Jerusalem. We open with the ongoing brouhaha over Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's speech to Congress. He emphasized for the second straight day that he would deliver his talk despite pressure to cancel. At the same time, a separate storm has blown across social media over comments by U.S. President Barack Obama. Here with more is Ali Walgalanter. Good evening. Prime Minister Netanyahu said yesterday he intended to go forward with his March 3rd address to Congress, saying Israel's survival is not a partisan issue. This is not a personal disagreement between President Obama and me. I deeply appreciate all that he has done for Israel in many fields. Equally, I know that the President appreciates my responsibility, my foremost responsibility, to protect and defend the security of Israel. I'm going to the United States not because I seek a confrontation with the President, but because I must fulfill my obligation to speak up on a matter that affects the very survival of my country. Disagreements over Israel's security have occurred between prime ministers in Israel from the left and from the right, and American presidents from both parties. None of these disagreements led to a rupture in the relationship between Israel and the United States. In fact, over time, our relationship grew stronger. But we do have today a profound disagreement with the United States administration and the rest of the P5 plus one over the offer that has been made to Iran. Controversy over the speech continues to swirl. The U.S. Senate's most senior lawmaker, Democrat Patrick Leahy of Vermont, has announced that he would skip Netanyahu's address, joining a growing list of U.S. lawmakers who have vowed not to attend. Leahy blamed House leaders for orchestrating what he called a tawdry and high-handed stunt that has embarrassed not only Israel but the Congress itself. Fourteen Democratic House members have declared that they would not attend that speech. As for the 27 Jewish Democrats, more than half in the House and Senate say they will show up. Only two Jewish senators so far say they'll skip it. Democratic Senator Brian Schatz of Hawaii and Independent Bernie Sanders from Vermont. The audience for the speech is shaping up to be largely Republican and almost completely white. Many members of the Congressional Black Caucus say they're planning to skip the speech, calling it a slight to President Obama that they can't and won't support. Meanwhile, Attorney General Yehuda Weinstein ruled today that it, it, is illegal, it is legal for Israeli television stations to broadcast the speech. Weinstein rejected the criticism, saying it was a political speech before an election, which is prohibited, saying the speech was valid news reporting. On another front, if you're erupted over the last 24 hours surrounding comments by President Obama and administration spokespeople, which suggested the January 9th terrorist attack on a Paris kosher market was not motivated by anti-Semitism. In an interview with VOX published Monday, Obama was asked about the media's tendency to inflate the dangers posed by worldwide terrorism. Here's what he had to say. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I don't blame the media for that. It, it, you know, what's the famous saying about uh, local newscasts, right? If it, if, it, uh, if it bleeds, it leads, right? You show crime stories and you show fires, because that's what folks watch. It's all you know, about ratings. And the, the problems of terrorism and dysfunction and, and chaos, uh, along with plane crashes and uh, a few other things, that's, that's the equivalent when it comes to covering international affairs. Look, the, the, the point is this. My first job is to protect the American people. It is entirely legitimate for uh, the American people to be deeply concerned when you've got a bunch of uh, violent, vicious zealots uh, who behead people or randomly shoot uh, uh, a bunch of folks uh, in, a, in a deli in Paris. Obama's comment led journalists to ask administration spokespeople whether Obama had any doubt that the terrorists attacked the deli because there would be Jews in that deli. The officials at first defended Obama's comments. First, White House spokesman Josh Ernest. It is clear from the, the, the terrorists and some of the writings that they put out afterwards what their motivation was. Uh, the adverb that the president chose uh, was used to indicate that the individuals who were killed in that terrible tragic incident were killed not because of who they were, but because of where they randomly happened were, to be. They, they weren't killed because they were in a Jewish deli, though? They were in a no, kosher John, deli? These individuals were not targeted by name. This is not the point. By name, but by, by religion, were they not? 
Well, John, I, the, there were people other than just Jews who were in that that deli. Do you see any doubt it was a, that deli was attacked because it was a kosher deli? This no, was John. Any I, random deli? No, John. It was I, a kosher deli. I answered the question once. No. Ed. So then why didn't the president acknowledge that? If he knows that and it's obvious, why didn't he say that? He had a long... The president has acknowledged that on, on many occasions when he's had the opportunity to speak about this incident. Later yesterday, the question was posed again to State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki as well. Here's what she had to say. As you know, I believe if I remember the victims specifically, there were, there were not all victims of one background or one nationality. So I think what they mean by that is, I don't know that they spoke to the targeting of the grocery store or that specifically, but the individuals who were impacted. Well, I mean, right, but when the secretary went and paid respects to it, he was with a member of the Jewish community there. Naturally, it? given that is the... Na the, the, the grocery store is one that uh well don't you think that the target maybe even if all the victims even if the victims came from different backgrounds or different religions different nationalities wasn't the tar the, the store itself was the target was it not but i mean that's different than the individuals being i don't have any more to all right well really does the administration believe that this was an anti-jewish uh, an attack on the jewish community in paris i don't think we're going to speak on behalf of french authorities and what they believe was uh the situation at, at play like, here yeah but if a guy goes into a a, a kosher market and mm -hmm. starts shooting it up you know he's not looking for buddhists is he well, again, Matt, I think it's relevant that obviously the individuals in there who were shopping and working at the store. Who does, one exp who does the administration expect shops at a kosher? I mean, I w might, but, you know, an attacker going into a store that is uh, clearly identified as being one of, you know, as, be as identified with one specific faith. I'm not sure I can understand how it is that you can't say that this was a... This, this was a I just don't attack have more for you, Matt. It's an it's a issue for the French government to address. The episode left critics angry, including some supporters of the administration. Hours later, both Ernest and Saki rushed to backtrack on the refusal to acknowledge an anti-Semitic motive behind the Paris attack. Saki noted on Twitter that the administration has always been clear that the attack on the kosher grocery store was an anti-Semitic attack. Ernest similarly took to Twitter to say that our view has not changed, terror attack at Paris kosher market was motivated by anti-Semitism. And he added that Obama didn't intend to suggest otherwise. Laura? Thank you, Ellie. In what has been called the worst day for air pollution levels in five years, Magen Davida Dome emergency services have treated more than 260 people suffering from breathing problems. As a winter storm sweeps in, officials report that the air pollution stands between 20 and 40 times more than the average. Internal flights were canceled for most of the day due to the hazy conditions, and the Eilat Airport was also closed to landings. In the center and along the coast, the pollution is expected to improve by the evening hours, although in the rest of the country, it is predicted to continue until late tonight. Turning to Tehran, where massive rallies today with participants chanting against the U.S. and Israel took place as the Republic marked the 1979 Islamic Revolution, tens of thousands of Iranians took to the streets to commemorate the 36th anniversary, which toppled the pro-American Shah and brought the Islamists to power. In Tehran, President Hassan Rouhani told the crowd he will spare no efforts to protect the rights of the Iranian people, especially amid frenzied efforts by the West to negotiate a deal with Tehran to curb its nuclear activities. Another Islamic State hostage has been killed. The U.S. government has confirmed that 26-year-old American aid worker Kayla Mueller is dead. This just days after the Islamic State released a statement saying she was killed in an airstrike conducted by the Jordanian Air Force last week. The airstrikes were in response to the horrific burning to death of the Jordanian pilot at the hands of ISIS. While the circumstances of Mueller's death remain unclear, an email with a photograph sent to her family from ISIS over the weekend allowed American intelligence to verify her death. The announcement culminated 18 months, in which Mueller's family kept the fact their daughter Kayla was being held by Islamic State terrorists in Syria a secret. It appears her family and the U.S. government had hoped that doing so may aid in securing her release. Over the weekend, Kayla's parents received a private message from her ISIL captors uh, with additional information about her death. Uh, that information was shared with the intelligence community. They conducted a review and an analysis 
And uh, after that analysis was uh, completed, they concluded that Kayla has, in fact, died. And uh, the information that they reviewed did not allow them to arrive at a conclusion about her precise cause of death. U.S. President Barack Obama said he was heartbroken over her death. He stressed the government had devoted enormous resources to secure her release. I've been in touch with Kayla's family. She was uh, an outstanding young woman uh, and a great spirit. Uh, and I think that spirit will live on. I think the, uh, the more people learn about her, the more they appreciate uh, what she stood for and how it stands in contrast with the barbaric uh, organization that uh, held her captive. Uh, uh, we devoted enormous resources and always devote enormous resources to uh, freeing captives or hostages uh, anywhere in the world. And, you know, I deployed... Um, uh, uh, an entire uh, operation uh, at significant risk to rescue uh, not only her but the other individuals that had been held um, and probably missed them by a day or two. Residents and relatives from Mueller's hometown of Prescott in Arizona lamented her death. Hi, my name is Erin Street and um, I'm here to talk about Kayla Mueller. Kayla was my closest friend my kindred spirit. I'm going to miss her more deeply than words can express. She has done more in her incredible 26 years than many people could ever imagine doing in their lifetime. My daughter said to me, things that were important to Kayla are finally getting the attention that they deserve. Kayla has touched the heart of the world. The world grieves with us. In Washington, Arizona Senator John McCain fought back the tears on the Senate floor. On behalf of the people of Arizona and the United States Congress, I want to express the deepest condolences to Kayla's parents, Marcia and Carl Mueller, her loving family and many friends. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Kayla devoted her young life to helping people in need around the world, to healing the sick and bringing light to some of the darkest and most desperate places on earth. She will never be forgotten. Mueller traveled to Syria to aid refugees trying to escape the civil war. According to reports, she'd been in Syria one day and one night when she was kidnapped on August 4th, 2013. She was no stranger to areas of conflict in the Middle East. After graduating from university, she volunteered in India and Israel. In 2010, she joined the International Solidarity Movement, a pro-Palestinian activist group, and worked in the West Bank. She reportedly spent time in Tel Aviv, volunteering for the African Refugee Development Center, a non-profit organization that helps African refugees and asylum seekers. After receiving confirmation of their daughter's death, her parents released a note written by Kayla during her 18 months of captivity. I, I have come to see that there is good in every situation. Sometimes we just have to look for it, Kayla wrote. Margot Dutkevich, IBA News. A court in Belgium declared today that a radical Islamic group that recruited youngsters to fight in Syria was a terrorist organization that wanted to violently overthrow democracy and replace it with a strict Sharia law. The court in Antwerp sentenced the group's leader to 12 years in prison. Today's verdicts come in one of Belgium's biggest ever terror trials. 46 Muslims were indicted, although only a handful appeared in court. Others are believed to be fighting with Sunni armed groups in Syria or to have died in that country's brutal civil war. Turning to Australia, where counter-terrorism police said today that they thwarted an imminent attack linked to Islamic State after arresting two men in Sydney. Yesterday, Australia has been on heightened alert for attacks by homegrown Islamic radicals. It raised its national terror threat to high for the first time in September when hundreds of police conducted raids after receiving information that a radical group planned a public beheading. Police said that the men were arrested yesterday after a raid on a home in a western Sydney suburb and had been charged with planning a terrorist attack. When we did the search of the premises, a number of items were located, including a machete, a hunting knife, 
a homemade flag representing the prescribed terrorist organisation IS, and also a video which depicted a man talking about carrying out an attack. We will allege that both of these men were preparing to do this act yesterday. This is, this is indicative of the threat that we now have to live with and which we are now having to deal with. The type of act that we will allege that was going to be undertaken is consistent with the messaging coming out of IS. Three Arab American Muslims were shot dead in their North Carolina home last night, setting social media sites buzzing over accusations of double standards after major media outlets failed to report the story. Police have not yet attributed a motive for the killings, but said the victims, aged 19 to 23, were pronounced dead at the scene and were shot in the head. A 46-year-old suspect turned himself over to police and, according to local media reports, is being held at the Durham County Jail. Members of the Muslim community expressed outrage that the deadly shooting attracted little attention in the American national press. The Palestinian Authority opened an embassy in Stockholm last night, just months after Sweden became the first Western European country to recognize Palestine as a state. The inauguration of the embassy came at the end of a visit by PA President Mahmoud Abbas. A small number of Palestinians gathered outside their new embassy for the ceremony, some holding pictures of the late Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. Relations between Sweden and Israel have nosedived since the initial announcement, but Swedish Prime Minister Stefan Löfven insisted yesterday after meeting with Abbas that Sweden could maintain a good relationship with both the Israelis and Palestinians. President Abbas and I have talked about, of course, the serious situation in Palestine, uh, especially in Gaza. We have talked about our bilateral relations, the next step in the peace processes, uh, the Palestinian state building process also, and how Sweden can contribute, but also what Sweden expects of Palestine. In addition, we have made demands uh, regarding the implementation of our development uh, cooperation with good control, respect for human rights, the, fi the fight against corruption for gender equality and also to continued reform efforts. There is no contradiction whatsoever between maintaining good relations with Palestine and continuing maintain good relations with Israel. We are convinced that people in both Palestine and Israel are yearning for and are entitled to peace and security. Turning to Ukraine, where fighting continued to rage, rage in the eastern part of the country today, killing five people at a bus station in the rebel stronghold of Donetsk, as Western leaders confirmed that they would take part in crucial peace talks being held later in the day. A spokesman for German Chancellor Angela Merkel said both she and French President Francois Hollande would travel to the Belarusian capital Minsk to attend the four-way summit alongside their Russian and Ukrainian counterparts. European leaders have warned in recent days that there is no guarantee a deal would be reached with Moscow, which the West says is fueling a separatist r rising in eastern Ukraine with troops in arms. Germany and France have rushed to mediate after a recent uptick in violence in the region, where fighting has killed at least 5,300 people since April. Leading Jewish groups have criticized the German government for creating a new commission on anti-Semitism without including a single Jew. Julia Schopes from the Moses Mendelssohn Center for European Jewish Studies called it a unique scandal that the Interior Ministry didn't include any Jewish scientists or community leaders on the commission it created to fight anti-Semitism and support Jewish life in Germany. Schopes announced that his center in cooperation with the American Jewish Committee and the Amadou Antonio Foundation Against Anti-Semitism and Racism would create an alternative commission that would stress the Jewish perspective and include both Jewish and non-Jewish experts. Aneta Kahana from the Amadou Antonio Foundation also criticized the government for neglecting to call Jewish experts on the eight-person committee, saying no one would even think of creating a conference on hatred of Islam without Muslims or a roundtable on the discrimination of women without women. 
A spokeswoman for Germans, Germany's Interior Ministry said the question of religious affiliation of the experts on the commission was not a criteria in the selection process. And back here at home, the fourth annual Kosher Wine Festival opens tonight at the International Convention Center in Jerusalem, where thousands of people are expected to come to sample the drink of the gods. Guests at the Wine Expo will enjoy samples from more than 40 of the best kosher wineries. Alongside the wine tastings, there will be special cooking workshops with some of the Israel's top chefs. The 90 shekel admission fee gets you a wine glass, and you can sip to your heart's delight from the booths around the venue. The festival is an opportunity for wine connoisseurs and novices alike to try a wide variety of the country's kosher offerings. That's a kosher wine festival tonight and tomorrow from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. at Binyanei Oma, the International Convention Center. In local money matters, the shekel was mixed in foreign currency trading. While shares were down in the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange, here are the late afternoon numbers. Returning to the weather as the hazy conditions end, rain and strong winds are predicted across the country, with snow expected to fall on Mount Hermon and on the northern mountain peaks. Here are the highs and lows for the next 24 hours at home and abroad. And that's all for this newscast. Aaron Viner will be at this desk tomorrow. Please join her for more news from Israel and abroad. Until then, I'm Laura Cornfield wishing you a good evening and shalom from Jerusalem.